Hey guys, it's Tarko Cycle and FPV, and again, I'm working on another quad for a customer, a very good customer of mine, and uh, let me show you the mess that I've got sitting here. Okay, so so we've got a bunch of quads to work on for him, and um, I'll be honest with you, man, there's some headaches here. Uh, you know, it's not normal to see this kind of headaches, but they're here. Uh, this is the, e the Emax Hawk 5 Sport, okay, and one of the things about this one that really bothered me is that if you go, and I'm going to show you what I've been working on here. We've got the whole Emax, uh, let me see if I can get these pages up for you. Um, here, I'm going to show you the computer screen here. Okay, so so here's Emax's website, right? Um, and here's the CLI dump that you can get if you scroll down. The problem is the CLI dump is really done from, uh, I think I've got it saved here. Let me let me see if I can find the notepad. Uh, this is, uh, I think it's going to be this one here. This is their most recent dump that they're offering on the website, like 4.04. Emax, get it together, okay? This is pretty sad that we're up to 4.2 or what have you, and you're, or actually, I think I think Matex 405 is only 4.1, what have you. Uh, but still, I mean, update your stuff. I mean, it's really important that, you know, things start, you know, it's, it's, it's updated as of June 30, 2019 is the firmware file, right? Um, and, and, yeah, it bothers me a little bit because if I go here and I go to my uh, update firmware, um, look at the Maytech. We're, we're talking about uh, uh, November 15th, uh, 2019, 4.1.1. And that is literally the most recent version for this 405. So it would be nice if Emacs would just, for the at the very least, just show the update. Now, I'm going to post it because I, I don't understand this concept at all. Um, one thing that I did also want to point out, and I had to, I think I had to pull, uh, let me go to the manual here. So here's the, here's the manual for the Hawk 5, okay? The, well, this is the Hawk 5 Pro. I, I think I have the manual. I don't know where it went now, but I went to Banggood actually to download that one. So the Hawk 5 Sport, I think that's where I typed was. Uh, let me do let me do that real quick because I'll show you guys. I mean, it's just inconsistent how a company is supposed to be. And I like Emacs. I'm a dealer for Emacs, but I mean, get your stuff together, guys. Hawk 5 Sport manual. Let's do that real quick, okay? Uh, yeah, this is it here. Guys, I, I checked this manual out. So here's the Hawk 5 Sport manual, okay? Now check this out. Let's get down here because one of the things that was wrong, I, okay, the customer had a problem with this one, couldn't get smart audio to work, couldn't get any of this stuff to work, and, and that's fine. So I go look at their um, manual real quickly, right? So we're going to scroll through this. And this is, again, where I get real irritated about this. So, so here's where you start. It says, if you want to use it in beta flight, right? So it says, first of all, it's operated on UART 6. Well, let's see, guys. Um, let's go ahead and go to UART 6. Uh, so let me connect. And let's go to UART 6. We're, as a matter of fact, I'm going to turn the um, power off right now because this thing is just cooking. Let's go to UART 6, okay? Oh, there is no UART 6, all right? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Not only is there no UART 6, I said, well, maybe, maybe, just maybe, they had a, um, a, a firmware change or what have you. So we'll go back to the manual. And, and I'm, not, I'm not riping as much as I'm saying, look, I mean, you know, you guys put this stuff out. And it's not just Emacs doing it, right? There's a bunch of other people that are, their manuals are off. Uh, but... But you put it out, and people spend pretty good money, and then they end up having to, you know, I'm not trying to say I don't want the work, but they end up having to pay somebody more uh, to do something because this stuff is just absolutely uh, not put together properly. And again, I'm a dealer, so I mean, they're going to get pissed off at me. Fine, they get pissed off at me, but we just call it like it is, right? I'm, I'm, there's there's no affiliate money getting picked at, kicked back here. And I've got my customers spending their hard-earned money. Let's look at this, okay? So, so I said, okay, fine. They're saying um, they want you to go... Uh, let's see here. Just pay attention here. Ours were fine. Uh, you are at six. Okay. That's the first thing that's wrong, right? Then the VTX SA. We're going to go through that in just a minute, but here's where we go down here, right? So we, let's get to the bottom here and it starts talking about the flight controller or beta flight. And here's where it says, put flight controller DF, DFU mode, and then go download the latest F Maytech F405, uh, uh, firmware, right? Uh, okay, so that's what I did. And even when I did that, there's still no UART 6. So again, I wanted to make sure that I followed their instructions. And in doing so, there's still no UART 6. So that doesn't help me at all. So here's the deal. Um, here's what I ended up doing. And so for you guys that are trying to get smart audio to work or anything else to work, uh, let's go ahead and look at what we have to do. The first thing we did, let's go into Betaflight here. So the first thing I did was I, I did download their dump file. Okay, and because of the version changes, now this is their dump file. Uh, because of the version changes, some of these red lined out, but that's fine. There wasn't anything that was a major issue. Uh, you can paste this into the new 4.1.1 firmware download for Maytech. So that's exactly what I did. So I went over here, and I'll go to our CLI real quick. Okay, so in the CLI, you're going to see that we have 4.1.1 loaded. Okay, and there it is right there. And that's the newest one that we've got. 
Uh, once that was loaded and saved, right, I then took their old dump file and pasted it. And the only reason I did it is I wanted to see how they were defaulting their items, for example, when I for their ports, for example. So then I finally go to ports, and I'm like, okay, great. In ports, this is once you paste their uh, default CLI back in, or their dump file back in, here's what we've got. We've got VTX, uh, we've got TBS on UART 5, not UART 6, and we have a run cam uh, set here. And I want to make sure uh, this, yeah, that probably is going to be right to do the OSD, I guess. I don't know, because, uh, I don't know. I mean, I really, I really don't know if that's going to even work properly. But in either case, here's what we're going to do next. So my monitor, I know the TBS works, right? And, and, and here's why. Because I went into uh, Betaflight. So I'm going to show you how this works. So once I copy and pasted uh, the, the file, so again, uh, you go to the Emacs USA website, uh, and you can download uh, the dump file uh, from their uh, page. It's this big, ugly, uh, yellow square that should say completely outdated, uh, but it's not. So you can copy that one, um, and you can save that, and then you can go to your beta flight, and you can do your firmware update, right, like normal. So you just go to update firmware, Matek uh, 405, and then it's 4.1.1. Do that, copy it over. Um, as a matter, you know what? As a matter of fact, I'm just going to do it for you. All right. So we're going to start from scratching because this is it's absolutely irritating. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to click update firmware first, and I'm going to do a full chip erase. Okay. So we're going to update the firmware. We're going to load it uh, locally here. Or sorry, load it from online, and we're going to flash it. Might as well just knock this out. Have you guys watch it, and let's just get going. Okay. Sorry, I wasn't intending on doing that, but the more I try to explain it, the more I realize that. I'm, I'm, I think my frustration is probably getting the best of me right now, and I try to explain it. So we'll just watch, okay? All right, so we're done with the erasing, and we're going to go ahead now and uh, do the flashing, okay? So once it's flashed, we're going to log back in, and then we're going to go and download the CLI. I'm going to show you how I did that, okay? Uh, or sorry, the dump file, the, the CLI dump file. Uh, and I'm just going to go through the, all the steps again, all right? We can do this here. One of the problems, one of the big problems about this is that um, the camera system in here runs on wireless as well. So when the um, VTX is stuck on a wireless channel that interferes, it cuts all my cameras out. It happens occasionally, and I hate it. So we know that like going to channel E5, for example, is safe for us. It doesn't interfere with our signal, but I can't get there, right? I couldn't get there doing the smart audio. So I wanted to get this thing set properly. So that's why we're here. All right, so we've done our programming. Our, our flash is done, so we're going to connect. Okay, and I'm just going to reset everything here, and I'm going to go to the CLI, and we're going to type version, okay, and we're going to see that we're running this version, all right? Now, we don't have to, uh, we don't have to copy and paste if you just want to make some setting changes, but I'm going to show you what I did, all right? So when we're here, I'm going to stay in my CLI right now because I know I'm going to have to paste. So now I'm going to minimize, and I'm going to go to there. <coughs> website. I'm going to click under the, if you go to drones and then you go to Hawk Sport and you scroll all the way down. Uh, look, I uh, just click one actually. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, let's see. PNP, Twitter, I know this doesn't matter. So just go scroll all the way down and you get somewhere to this CLI dump right here. You click this and it's going to go to a black screen and there it is. And there's the file right there, right? So all I did was I highlighted everything, and I just do that out of habit. I don't care if it's got um, the version over it, but just like this, okay? And once I do that, I'm going to hit Control-C on my keyboard, and then I went over to my Start, and I right-click on the Start button, left-click on Run, type the word Notepad, and hit Enter, and then when my cursor is in here, I hit Control-V, and there it is right there, right? So there's my entire setup, okay? Now, what I did, because they sent your rate profiles and everything else as well, what I did is I then came over to Betaflight, and I, right in here where it says write your command here, I did Control V again, and I hit Enter, and here it goes. It's going to all scroll. Now, you're going to see some red lines come up, and uh, that's fine. I went and looked at them all. Some of them are on the rate profile issue. It's not a big deal, uh, but for the most part, I was surprised. Everything went pretty smooth, which means there's not that many changes as far as in these line commands. Uh, and these settings. So there they are right there, and those are in rate profiles. You can go spend your time later scrolling up through this to see if they're important to you. Uh, they don't matter to me right now. I've already checked them out. Um, and then you're going to have something to do with the VTX, and I think that might have been in that area uh, as well. 
Um, but let's just keep going. It takes a little while for this to go. Uh, but when it's done, it will then set the TBS smart audio, uh, uh, but it will not put a VTX table, right? So there's no VTX table set. You have to get that. And that's where I'm going to show you what I did next, okay? So let's just let this go. I've been having to sit here and watch this anyway, so. And it's kind of upsetting. I mean, like, I don't know. Anyways, all right, so we're here, right? Now, one thing I did notice is, uh, well, I'm reading the red here. Sorry, I didn't mean to hesitate because I was wondering, I did think before that it didn't save. So make sure that you do type save when you're done so it reboots, okay? And again, you can go research the, the errors. There weren't anything that was uh, critical at all on the errors that I saw. Now we're going to click connect, okay? Now check this out. When we click connect and we go to our ports, here's our defaults, guys. So this is, if you don't want to do the CLI copy and paste or the dump copy and paste, you can just set this yourself this way. But here it is right here. The problem is also there's no VTX table loaded, right? But we know we're running TBS is what it says. So from there, I went to video transmitter and then it says go to this page right here so you can download the file. So I did. So I went to this page, which is the uh, GitHub, Betaflight GitHub page. And I scrolled down until I found this one that says TBS most used and it's the Smart Audio 2.0 USA. Don't click it, you have to right click it. So right click on it and then left click on save link as. Okay, and when you do that, I made, I have a whole bunch of VTX instructions and, and other things for my beta flight down. I've got hundreds of files. So I made, uh, under VTX instructions, I made a folder called TBS, okay, and I double click it, and this is where I saved it. Okay, now I'm not gonna save it again because it's just gonna make a copy of the file. But once you save it, right, go back to your beta flight, let me scroll down to it, go back to beta flight, and then what you're gonna say is load from file, and then find that file that you downloaded right here. Okay, now it fills everything in. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna say, okay, when it starts up, what channel do you want it on? And this is a great way to test to see if it's working. So for me, for this to work and not interfere with my video, and I hope it doesn't when I turn it on, I want it to be on E5 with a 25 uh, power, and I wanna click save. Okay, now what's important here is I'm going to give you a screenshot. I'm going to give you a shot of the actual quad itself now. Now, if it doesn't interrupt my video, then I've picked the wrong channel, but here goes. Okay, so I'm going to keep moving my hand over a little bit just to make sure we don't have any hiccups. Okay, so you see how it says E5. Okay, the fact that it even put that in there means your smart audio is working now. It means it's configured properly. You do not have to, and I'm still passing my hand over to make sure we're not frozen. So let me, um, let me do this here. Okay, so one thing I want you to notice, you do not have to try to run smart audio from your radio to see if it works. If you can control it from beta flight, then you're good, okay? So um, that's one very important thing. So watch what we do here, and I think my monitor is charged now, I'm not sure, but yeah, so you can see right here, we have a screen, I believe the cap is on, and that's why, so you don't have any image. So there's your image of E5, and it's working just fine, okay? So now what we want to do is we're going to go, I'm going to lay this on top here real quick, and we're going to go, we're going to, go to our smart audio, and you guys can watch. We're going to go to our smart, smart audio menu, if I can. Actually, let me go ahead and go to configuration. And I think I have to set this now. Uh, let, me, let me show you what I'm working on here. So because it's like this and we're running TBS, I need to go back and put TBS in here and click save, right? So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, now let's connect and let's go to our receiver tab. All right, we do have it. So we are just needing to change our channel around a little bit. Let's go here, save. Uh, nope, sorry, sorry. This one, there we go. Okay, so we have all this set now, right? So now I believe that we can go to our smart audio. There you go. And I'll show you the screen now that we're doing that with. So let me make this the bigger one and that the smaller one, okay? So just to get back there, because I did that before you could see it, let me go to exit. Uh, just go to exit. Okay, so, so we boot up. Now we're going to go to our smart audio. We're going to go to features. Okay, and this is where we're at, right? So you, you're not going to the tramp one. You're going to the VTX SA. And from here, you can do anything you want. So watch when I tell it to go to pit mode. Okay. And I set it. Yes. Okay, and then I go back. And I go back. And I'm going to go to save and exit. Okay, and save and exit. That takes a long time. Okay. So now, when I go to my VTX on here, 
what you will see, actually, you know what? I need to do that a little different. Uh, let me do this instead. So let me go to Features, PTXSA, uh, and we're going to do Pit Mode Off, and we're going to take our power to uh, 200, let's say, okay? And I'm going to click Set, Yes. And then I'm going to go back, and then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to save and exit. Okay, now, I'm going to disconnect and reconnect and go to VTX. And you can see here on the screen now, look, okay? You see now it's automatically changed to 200. So it's got it. Now, I want to go back. So I'm going to go back here, and I want to, because that's just too much. I don't need 200, and I don't need this thing cooking. So I'm going to take it down to 225, and I'm going to set it, yes, and then I want to go back. And then I'm going to save and exit. Okay. Now, when I disconnect uh, my uh, beta flight and I reconnect and I go to VTX, you're going to see I'm back to 25. Okay. So, and I'm just checking to make sure, okay, we have no frozen, we have no frozen screens at all. Everything looks good. So this is it, right? So this is how you do this. Um, it's a little unfortunate that they made it that complicated, but if you, if you follow these steps, you can get your smart audio back. Uh, you can get your TBS configured. You can get everything done that you need. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to test and make sure that everything else motor-wise makes sense. So we're going to activate the motors, okay? And I need to go check the modes here because I believe, yeah, and then this, yeah, that's going to be a problem. So let's go to receiver here real quickly. So this should be auxiliary three, I believe. So we're going to go to modes, then we're going to do, and this should be auxiliary three because this is how the customer has it. Horizon will be auxiliary three in the middle, and then I believe did not have this activated at all. So we're going to just delete that and we're going to go down here and we're going to go to Acro Trainer. And I think it's used Acro Trainer. Let's do that one. And we're going to add a range and we're going to put that one here. All right. So that's how he's got it set. Now, what I want to do is we want to go to our motors and make sure that everything's configured properly. Okay. So let's see. Go. All right. Let's go to motors. And let's make sure one spins one. I could turn this TV off. We don't need this anymore. Let's make sure one spins one. Perfect. Two spins two. Perfect. Three spins three. Perfect. And four spins four. Perfect. Everything else is working great. So, I mean, really, the only, la the only other thing that we really need to do right now is we want to make sure that our orientation is fine. And it is. Okay. And the one thing I am curious about, let me see go back to my screen here. I am curious about one thing, which is going to be, uh, okay, so this is how, uh, now I'm curious about what they're doing here. So, hmm. Go back. <sighs> back. Okay, exit. Sorry, I'm just checking something out here that, that is concerning me a little bit. And I think I'm about to lose my screen, so I may not mess with it too much. Uh, let me see. Okay, I'm going to leave this alone for now because my screen's about to go out. Anyways, so this is how you adjust these. Okay, and now it's ready to go. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to disconnect. Uh, I guess we'll go to beta flight. I mean, uh, sorry, BL Heli, just to make sure everything looks good. Let's read the setup. Uh, okay, sorry, this is 32 protocol. My bad. So let's go to BL Heli 32 right here. Okay, we got that loaded. Let's read the setup. Uh, I'm not going to download it just yet. Let's read the setup. Okay, 32.4. This hasn't even been, this hasn't even been updated. This is terrible. So we're going to flash the BL Heli. Uh, and we're going to go 32.7. So let's go ahead and click. Actually, we're going to go to ESC flash. And we're going to do them all. So flash selected ESCs. Let's do that. Better charge my little monitor while we're at it. So make sure you do this, guys. All right? You want to also make sure that you're flashing. Um, and let me just... You put this up here. So you definitely want to make sure that you go back and you flash your ESCs, right? They need to be updated. And I have not, uh, I have not done, um, I have not downloaded the newest uh, BL Heli, uh, and I will do that after this video is done. But you do want to make sure that you you update uh, your ESCs, okay? Don't just assume that they're good to go. Um, 
So while that's updating, let me see what else we can do here. Uh, we know the VTX is working. I don't, I'm, I'm curious about the, uh, the OSD on the camera because I activated it, but I didn't seem to be able to move around it, but that could be just me not functioning with it properly. So I'm going to check more into that. Uh, that is the run cam. Let me see if I can look that up real quick. So let me do a run cam, um, beta flight, I spelled that wrong, OSD. Let me just click that and see what I can pull up here. Get this thing out of my way. Uh, let's do this. Okay, so I, yeah, I have a feeling that there's more to do with the controller setup than anything. So we have the camera power button, camera Wi-Fi button, camera change mode. There's a, quite a few things, I think. Now, granted, these aren't for all, every camera, right, because that's going to be for here. But we do have, um, this is for the split. I'm not really interested in the split as, run, as much as I am just in general for the cameras. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay, my, well, let's just stick with the VTX. I'll come do the, I mean, uh, the... Uh, the um, ESCs. I'll come and do the rest of this later. So let's go to ESC setup. Our ESCs are done. So they are now updated, okay? Uh, and one thing that they're not, though, is calibrated yet. So we're going to say disconnect now. Now that they're, now that they're fully done, we're gonna, we're gonna, we can write again, although it should have already been written. should say there's no change. Okay, so we're going to disconnect. Now, when you disconnect this, please keep in mind that you do need to power it off, okay, completely. I completely remove the power. So here's what we're going to do. Let's do this, right? So we're going to go ahead, and I'm running this on an AC-DC converter, so I'm just going to flip the power switch. And out of habit, I always disconnect my USB, all right? Now I'm going to connect the USB back first. And I'm going to go into my beta flight, all right? So let me do that, and let me just give you a screenshot of that. So I'm going to go to my beta flight here, and I'm going to connect. Now I'm old school, I'm gonna do it this way so you guys can follow along if you want. I'm going to go ahead and put us on one shot 125 so I can run a calibration and make sure these ESCs are functioning properly with no major gaps, okay? So what I do is I look at, okay, I, I see where I need to be here because this is gonna automatically change when I go to one shot 125. So I'm gonna to go to one shot 125 and say save and reboot, okay? Now I'm gonna reconnect, go to my configuration and you're gonna see right here, see how it dropped it to two kilohertz? That's just because in one shot 125, that's where we're at. So now what we want to do is now let's go ahead and calibrate the motors to make sure everything looks proper. So I'm going to activate my motors, make sure you got no props on. I'm going to activate them. I hear or arm them. Take the master uh, slider all the way up and turn it on. When the chime stops, drop it all the way down. Excellent. Now that it's done, I'm going to disarm it, disconnect it, okay? I'm going to go back to my uh, VL Heli 32, read it, and we're going to see what the numbers look like, okay? So here's what we're looking at. Uh, let me see, protocol, protocol, good. Okay, you see how it says setup not in sync with master, and then setup not in sync with master, and okay, so master is number one. So here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to right-click on motor one, and we're going to see our minimum is it? 110 or sorry 1010 and our max is 1992 and motor 2 1008 1988 we're going to look at just min for right now min 3 is 1011 and min 4 is 1012 so we're going to find the highest value for the minimum and in this case it's motor 4 and we're going to select left click on all the other motors and we're going to move that slider to 1012 to match motor 4 and we're going to click right setup and what we're doing is we're telling the system the minimum you can go is the highest value of motor uh, of the motors, right? So because if motor four is at 1012, and I've done videos on this before, but just to explain, if motor four is at 1012, like, and let's just look at this as a theoretical thing, four is at 1012 and one is at 1000, okay? Um, that means that motor four cannot go as slow as motor one, right? But motor one can go to 1014. It can go all the way down to 1000. So you have to get all the motors to be at an equal point, which means that it wouldn't benefit you if motor four went to 1014 and motor one could go even slower. Your quad would start acting weird. So what you tell it is 
don't bring motor don't bring any of the motors lower than the highest value of the of the minimum okay so that they can all achieve that same value all right so in this case that's 1014 now let's look at the maximum and the same thing applies if you were to take your throttle and you were to go uh, here i'm sorry i thought i was um, explaining this to you so let me do it like this okay so let's look at the maximum now if you were to take your throttle and bump it all the way up right so let's say one motor could go to 2000 one motor could go to 1990 well, you wouldn't want them to go to 2,000, and this one would be lower. You would all want them to go to the lowest possible value, right, of the motor. So if they can all go to 1,990, but only one can go to 2,000, for example, then you say bring it down and make it to the, the lowest maximum value. It makes sense. I don't know if I explained it properly, but you get my point. Is It has to be a value they can all achieve, okay? So when you do the minimum, you go to the, ma the highest value on the minimum and the lowest value on the max. That means they can all hit that range. So let's look at what we've got here. All right. Uh, let me let me do this here. Okay. So on the maximum, motor one is 1992. And then you right click to just do individual motors. Right click on motor two. Motor two is 1992. Motor three is 1992. And motor four is. Nine. So for this case, all of them are 1992. So this looks great. So now that we've selected these, make sure to left click on all the motors. We don't have to adjust, adjust the maximum. It's already set. We're going to. Uh, write the, uh, uh, call it here, the throttle. We're going to remove this and click Write Setup. Okay. So now when we disconnect, we don't have to turn the uh, quad off because we didn't do any firmware flashing. Now when we connect here, right, I'm going to go back and I'm going to check this out. Oh, guys, that's my son. I will. All right, guys. Sorry about that. Um, I want to talk to my son. So there you go. Um, all right. So you don't have to power it off, right? Uh, when you, but I, I did mine because he called, so I didn't know how long the call was going to be. So we are now going to power the drone back on, okay? And let me make sure we have no interruptions here. Doesn't look like we do. Uh, so let's check this out. Everything looks good. Uh, so now if we go to our motors tab, uh, let me see. Uh, let me see if I can get this to go. Okay. So you can see the motors are spinning. Uh, let's see. Let me see. Okay. Looks good. Now I want to take the slider. There we go. Excellent. See, I've got everything running clean. It looks good. All right. Once you've got to this point, right, you really don't have anything. You can go back now. Go to your, go to your configuration if you want. If you want to take it down to DSHOT 600 where it was at, that's fine. It's no problem. You can drop this and go to. I, I like to keep these at four and four. I, I don't really. I'm not into the eight and eight part here, but uh, everything else uh, would be fine. You could click save and reboot. Okay, and then you can now connect to your motors tab. Click this and look at that. Motors are running perfectly. Okay, everything looks good. They're going the right direction. Everything looks great, and we've got our, our TBS. Uh, we've. I'm sorry. We've got our um, smart audio working. You disable, okay. And guys, that's pretty much it. All right, uh, that pretty much does it for this one. Uh, luckily, we ran into some kinks with this, so we could at least put a video together on it. And I know this is kind of a long video, sorry, but wanted to make sure I covered it all in here. So there you go. If you have any questions, as always, guys, please you can go to our Facebook, uh, our Facebook, Facebook groups page right there that you can see at the top. And then, uh, as always, please, 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 please let me turn this off. I feel like that VTX is about to interrupt. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, it means a lot to me, and uh, like I said, my kids love to check it out. So other than that, guys, it is the weekend, uh, and I uh, want to tell you all, I hope you have a safe weekend. Make sure to go spend time with your family if you can, guys. You, you never know how much time you have left, so make the most of it. Other than that, safe flying. God bless, and we'll see you soon. Peace.